In this tutorial, I'm going to give a bit of an overview of how to use Aussie Render as an audio plugin in your favorite DAW or digital audio workstation. This really opens up the boundaries of what you can do with Aussie Render, lets you automate different parameters in the, in the tool. It also lets you uh, manipulate audio using um, uh, Aussie Render's different effects that you already have. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I'm using Reaper here as a sort of basic um, version of a door that you could use. Um, this is my like door of choice and it's also completely free to use. So I would recommend you uh, try it out if you haven't used a door before. Um, I'm gonna double click here to create a new track and then we can just get started. So I'm gonna press this FX button, which will show me all the different audio effects that I have. Um, I've already searched in Aussie here. You can just search that yourself. Uh, to get the Aussie Render uh, VST appearing. So I'm going to double click this and immediately we're going to start hearing uh, some of the audio that Aussie Render is outputting. Um, you should, this is just the basic like view of Aussie Render uh, with the visualizer and all the different effects that you have on the, on the right hand side. Um, obviously I can start like uh, messing around with these just as I do in the uh, standalone version. Um, but what's really powerful about a, a digital audio workstation is being able to automate these on a timeline. So we've got a timeline here and I can just start playing this. If, I, if I'm just playing this now, like nothing interesting is happening on here, but we can start to automate some of these parameters and make uh, these sliders move by themselves. So to do that, you press this button here. Uh, this will show a long, long, long list of all of the different parameters that are available in Aussie Render. Um, we're interested here in automating this depth function so we can kind of like slowly enable the ripple uh, effect. Let's keep this on uh, zero for now. Um, we're looking for something called ripple depth. So I'm going to just click this button, search ripple depth. Um, and there's a few different things here. The main one is the ripple depth one, which is controlling the slider value of this. But we can also control things like what LFO is currently being used, or even um, things that affect the, the like range of the slider. So uh, let's just focus on the main uh, slider here for now. So again, go back to here, you can search ripple depth. Um, and then I'm just gonna uh, make this active so it appears in, uh, appears in Reaper. And if I expand this now, I've got a, um, a, a control here that I can use to uh, manipulate what the current value of that slider is. Um, I have little handles here that let me control that over time. So if I drag this up here and then I double click here, oops, uh, I might need to do insert point, there we go, um, and drag this all the way down. I can see now how over time, if I put this back here, this will start out high and then slowly fade down to zero and then start back high again and go back down. Um, I'm also gonna just uh, pop this out in a new window using this button uh, and drag this onto my other screen. And now we can see this here permanently. I'm just gonna rescale this. So we've got this going on here. Nice. Um, this lets me just minimize this and we can like see this in more detail. Um, in Aussie Render, in, sorry, in uh, Reaper, you can hold um, Alt, uh, Option or Alt and control the sort of curve that you're seeing here. Um, to get some different like levels of automation. Um, but what's a bit more exciting is if we can get something that reacts to music as we're playing it. So I'm just gonna find a, uh, an audio file on my computer and open that up. So now I've opened up a audio track on the same um, track that I've got Aussie Render. At the moment, because Aussie Render is a synthesizer, it's completely overwriting um, all of the sound that this uh, audio file is, is giving us but we can change that if we open up the effect again. Um, and we, um, if we change this to uh, use the input audio rather than the generated audio using this button here, you'll start to see and hear uh, this, this um, uh, audio track in the background actually uh, be played instead. Of course, you can still use all of the different audio effects on top of that. So uh, this, uh, let me show you a, maybe a, a better example. So if I use the bit crush effect, you'll see and hear the effect that that has on the image. 
So this is a more like a distortion effect if you're applying that. Um, but yeah, so this starts to let you actually like manipulate things using, using that image. What's probably more exciting is if you're wanting to make your own visuals for, for example, like a music video, you could um, still use the Aussie render visuals here, but you could start to automate things in here using uh, the audio that you're providing in. So um, for example, I've got like a kick drum that you can see like appearing here. If I just change it to be uh, going over that period, there we go. Um, I can now, for example, control the scale of the image using that kick drum effect. So if I go like this, now this is going to react to the to the music as she's going along. You see these like peaks that are appearing. They're now um, translating into sort of peaks on uh, on this scale graph. So what that means is I can play that music. Maybe if I duplicate this in another track. Uh, and then go back to where we were. So now you can hear that music and also hear uh, this over it. And if we wanted to, we can just completely mute this uh, track. But now we're still going to get that same um, awesome reactive audio effect. So that's some of the basics of what you can do with um, Aussie Render in a door. Um, this isn't obviously limited to just this effect. You could do this on any number of effects and have it react uh, exactly how you want. If you want it to be reacting a bit more strong, you could change, say, three, and now it's going to react a lot more strongly uh, on those sort of like kick drum effects. That's kind of it for this video. Um, please let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in a follow up tutorial. And thanks for watching. Bye.